Welcome, welcome to the Josh Hall Web Design Show. Web Design Show, helping you build better websites and create a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Hey, friends! Welcome into the podcast. This is episode 183. So big news, huge news for me at least, and I think it will be for you at some point moving forward. I have officially moved from Google Analytics, and I am no longer using it. I am now using a Google Analytics alternative tool that is GDPR compliant and is also compliant with all sorts of regulations from a privacy standpoint that's going on, and that tool is called Fathom. In this episode, I am super excited to bring on one of Fathom's co-founders, Paul Jarvis, to share more about this tool. And actually, at the time of recording this interview with Paul, I had not yet signed up for Fathom, but this was the like this was the catalyst. For me, you will literally hear me through this episode, have the questions, and then get all the answers I needed to feel 100% confident with using Fathom. I've been using it for almost a month now, and I will tell you, I love it. And I really enjoy the simplicity and also just knowing that it is compliant with the privacy stuff that's going on nowadays. And we actually reference an episode we did not that long ago in 169 with the folks from uh, Termageddon talking about why Google Analytics is not legal in a lot of countries now and what's going on and the changes that you're going to see now and into the future. So highly recommend listening to that if you haven't already after this one. But for now, enjoy my interview with Paul. And side note, you'll hear about this. If that name rings a bell, Paul Jarvis, it's because he's also the author of one of my very favorite books, Company of One. Now, That's kind of a previous life for him. He doesn't really do anything with that brand, but that even more so made me feel comfortable with moving forward with Fathom because Paul, as you'll find out, is just such a humble and honest, transparent, and just really cool dude. And he really cares about privacy and what's going on right now with just the human side of internet activity and all the things that are are in play with like tracking and again, privacy and all that good stuff. So I think you're really going to enjoy hearing from Paul. And as I did switching recently to Fathom, if you are interested in doing it too, after this interview, you can go to my link at joshhall.co slash Fathom, and you can try Fathom out with the free trial. It really is a, a super cool too. It is, it, it's it's robust and complex if you want it to be, but at the core, it's very simple. It's like a much more stripped down version of Google Analytics without all the fluff that you don't need. So I'm really enjoying it. I think you will too. After this interview, go to joshhall.co slash Fathom, F-A-T-H-O-M, to try it out. And of course, it'll be linked in the show notes at uh, joshhall.co slash 183. But for right now, here's Paul. Let's talk about this Google Analytics alternative that's GDPR compliant, and that is Fathom. Enjoy. Paul, welcome on to the show, man. What an absolute pleasure to have you on, dude. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on the show, Josh. Appreciate it. Yeah, we were just joking before we went live. Uh, well, actually, it was not a joke at all. Um, you wrote one of my favorite books called Company of One, and I had you on my bucket list to get on to this podcast because of that book and because of your background in web design and just your your mindset and your your lifestyle approach to to creative work and life. And uh, come to find out, our mutual friends at over at Termageddon uh, referred me over to this Paul guy behind Fathom. And I said, wait a minute, Paul Jarvis, as in like Paul Jarvis company of one Paul Jarvis. So the same uh, guy. How about that, man? Uh, I ha- I'm having you on the podcast. Uh, we're going to talk about Fathom and stuff, but I definitely want to hear uh, kind of your progression and your dream and how you got to this point. But maybe let's start out with, uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing where you're based out of. And then I'm curious when, you know, somebody asks you what you do when somebody who doesn't know you, when they inevitably ask that, what do you tell them? Yeah. So I live on Vancouver Island, which is above Seattle and over from the city of Vancouver. The nomenclature for the island is kind of weird because it's not Vancouver, the city it's Vancouver, the island, which are different things. So I usually just say I live in the woods on an island because it is in fact, true. Um, what was the second question? I already the forgot que- the second question. <laughs> second question. I know I, I'm bad at giving two questions at the same time. Second one is for somebody who doesn't know you, when they ask you what you do now, what do you, what do you tell them? Yeah, I'm co-founder of Fathom uh, Website Analytics. Um, yeah, I guess Fathom is GDPR compliant, simple Google Analytics alternative. So just website analytics. 
And for, you know, like your grandma or somebody who doesn't even know what a website is, what do you tell them? Cause I'm, I'm sure, sure it depends on the room you're in, right? Depending on how you Yeah, I make internets. That's, that's what I've told my parents for years is that I just make it just, just, I make internets because it's make, always been true. Can, can you please make your tagline on your email signature? Can you make that your tagline? Cause I love that. I, I, Paul Jarvis. I make internets. I make internets. Uh, yeah, man. So let's, let's start. I would love to hear again, selfishly, because you wrote one of my favorite books. Um, I would love to hear just your, a quick snapshot of your background and what led you to this point. Um, I know that's not really a part of your life now. You kind of mentioned to me that that's, you know, a previous life. Um, but if you, you know, I'd love to hear just a, a brief overview of your web design journey and then what, what led you here? Sure. I mean, I started uh, as a professional web designer in the 90s, um, so a long time ago. And for the first probably about 15 years, I did websites for clients. And that was my job. I worked as a freelancer, basically. So I worked with companies like uh, Mercedes Benz, Microsoft, Shaquille O'Neal, uh, Marie Forleo, Danielle Laporte. I worked with just people uh, like across the spectrum. I had very focused niches for periods of time, but that changed over time. And then, yeah, probably about 15 years in, I realized, okay, well, I can probably start. What I realized was that all web design, I liked writing and all web designers seem to write content for other web designers. And I was like, web designers aren't paying me money. Why would I write content for them? So I started writing content for people who were hiring web designers. Mm -hmm. So I started to write articles and books. I had a newsletter that went uh, every Sunday for seven or eight years. Uh, then I started making courses. Um, and then the whole time I was kind of dabbling in software, um, primarily SaaS companies. And they all, or half of them kind of worked, but they didn't hit that point where it was like, okay, this is going so well that I can start to scale back um, other things. And with Fathom, it kind of took on a life of its own and took off. And now, yeah, like I said, uh, pre-interview, like Fathom is basically, that's the only thing I do. I'm not writing books anymore. Killed my newsletter, killed my website, killed my Twitter. Um, I don't exist on the internet, I don't think, uh, very much, except uh, through Fathom now. <laughs> and so it's funny you mentioned that because uh, before we went live, I also mentioned this morning, I actually met with Matt Gartland, who is the the CEO of Smart Passive Income with, with Pat Flynn. And uh, he said that he was a big fan of yours and that he was on your newsletter. And he said it was funny. Just one day you were like, hey, this is the last one. This is the new thing now. So, uh, yeah. yeah, you you went for it, man. And I'm actually curious, what was it about this industry of analytics that is privacy focused? Like what what is it about Fathom that intrigues? you in, in this whole world? Because personally, this is not something that interests me terribly. So it's why I want to talk to you and find out what the heck's going on. So I don't have to read articles about it. What was For it sure. about this that intrigued you? Yeah. So, I mean, I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't that interested in analytics before Fathom either. And it was just kind of the, okay, I have a new customer or a client I'm setting up their website, throw on Google analytics next step. And that was always the thing. Right. And then I started to think, okay, well, Google analytics, it's not great, but it works and it's free. And then I started to think, okay, well, why is it free? Google isn't a charity. They're a, a multi-billion dollar company. And so I started wondering, okay, well, what are they doing with all of this data they're collecting on it's like 75 to 80% of websites on the internet use Google analytics. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Nobody knows. And that's, that, that kind of scares me a little bit. And I think it was Matt, the guy who started WordPress, who, or it was Tristan Harris um, from the Center for Humane Technology. One of those two guys said that if you aren't, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. And I was like, well, I'm not paying for Google Analytics. So yeah, I think that was in I, the social dilemma, right? I think that was yeah. Tristan who said that. Yeah. And so I figured, well, this is kind of weird. Like, I don't, I don't know what's happening here. And, and at the same time, I was getting frustrated with every time I would install Google analytics on a customer's site, I would have to teach them how to use it. And I just, mm. I didn't want to do like, I don't want to take a course in learning how to use Google analytics. And I don't want to teach others. Like I've made courses before. They're a lot of work. I don't want to teach people how to use it. So I was like, okay, well, what if there's just, what if I can kill two birds with one stone here? What if I can have uh, an analytics product that 
you just pay for. And the business model is simple. Like you pay for the thing you want to use. And so privacy can easily be achieved when it's just, okay, well, you're paying for that. We have no reason and no financial incentive to sell that data because our customers give us money and that's how we generate revenue. Whereas Google is an advertising company. And then on the same time, I wanted to make something that was just easy, like a single page. Here's the stats. I don't know if you, I don't know how old you are, but I don't know if you remember Mint Analytics or I think it was called Have a Mint or Mint. Sean no, and Min I created it. No. So I'm 35. I, I got into the web design world a little later. Um, okay. I got into it in 2010. So, or at least later, you know, for me and some of my colleagues now. Um, so yeah, I, I got into it around then. I don't know when Mint was. Yeah. yeah. So Mint was basically, it didn't, it didn't care about privacy, but it was just what, it was just simple analytics. It was just, this is the analytics on a single page. And I was like, this hasn't been updated in like 10 or 15 years. And like, nobody has iterated on this idea. And so just for fun one day, I designed a mock-up in Photoshop of what I thought analytics could look like, like V1 of Fathom. And I put it on my Twitter because I was tweeting at the time. And I think like 500 people liked it. And we're just that fry gif of like waving the money. Like, can I pay for this? Yeah. And then I was like, okay, well, I guess there's an idea here. Then we were, then we, uh, myself and a developer made version one of it, which was open source. And that was downloaded over a million times. And we were like, okay, this is great for developers who want to install and maintain and self-host it on like a digital ocean droplet or something like that. But what about all the other people who just want analytics to work a hosted product? So we made a, paid product. And then that, uh, yeah, caught on like wildfire and has taken over my entire life. And I wanted to clarify that too. So that's great. So you actually had a hand in creating this. It wasn't something that came across your desk and you, you know, endorsed it and took it to the next level. You actually were on the ground floor of this. Yeah, it was my idea. And I had, I, I went, I found a developer to work with. He went on and, and did something else. And then Jack came on board, my current co-founder, who's the, the technical software engineer wizard. Um, and him and I have been working on Fathom. Yeah, for I guess I guess Fathom's probably about four years old, and Jack's been with a uh, Jack's been with Fathom for about two and a half years, I think. Gotcha. So yeah, and he's my co-founder. He's the he's the my partner. He's my business wife. Yeah, nice. Well, and it's interesting because Fathom really does seem to solve two needs in my mind. One is obviously the, the privacy aspect, like you talk about, and that quote. We need to reiterate that quote. It's so great. It's that if you are not paying for something or if you're not paying for a product, you are the product. That's so important to remember in this, this digital life now. Um, so that's a huge aspect. And obviously our friends at again, they're the ones who got me in touch with you and that's how we mm-hmm. got connected. Um, we can talk about that in a little bit, but the other aspect is the simplicity of analytics. And it's so funny, man, um, of all my content, My number one most popular piece of content on my YouTube channel, which is now closing in on 400,000 views, is a 15 minute Google Analytics tutorial. I've seen it. So, did you see it? Did you intentionally look that up or did you just happen to see it? No, I was looking up um, Google Analytics tuts and that was the one that came up. How about that? Wow. So, the reason this is so funny and mainly is because that's all I know. I am not a Google analytics expert. I never go past that first layer, like a little bit I can dive down a little bit further, maybe to layer two, but that's it. A lot of people ask me, can you do like a big advanced course on Google (laughs) analytics? I'm like, listen, dude, all I know is in my 15 minute tutorial. That's all I, that's all I need to know. I just want to know page views, bounce rate, basic stats, a little bit of information. I don't even really care about device or, or any of that stuff near as much or, or behavioral flow as much. I just want to know page views and bounce rates and basic stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so that seems to be the, the, the second need that you guys feel. And again, the reason I say that is not to sound boastful, but I think that tutorial that I had no idea would catch on solved a need too. I think people wanted to just know the basics of what was going on. They didn't want a big course. They didn't yeah. want to have to explain Google analytics over and over. So I think people found that tutorial and there, there yeah. it is. That's what happened. I, and I think you're not alone. Like I think 99 and what we found running Fathom now for many years is that 99% of people only need that surface layer. And all the rest is just complexity that exists in the software and is getting worse now with GA4 um, and 
Universal Analytics being retired. They announced that today um, as of us recording. I don't know when this is being released, but yeah, they, this will Google probably, announced this... that um, Universal Analytics is not only going away, but that data will be inaccessible at some point. So all your historical data is just going to get canned. Splendid. And the true <laughs> irony about this is, yeah, we're recording this in, in mid-March. This will probably come out in about a month in April. Um, I just in February released a new version of that tutorial, not realizing that this was the case. So right after I released that, then I saw the news that that entire thing is going to be scrapped. So yeah, I'm trying to think yeah. of what to do, but maybe and I'll move into making fathom tutorials after this, because I'm, there you I'm go. very looking forward towards a, uh, a simplified version. Cause again, the complex stuff, sometimes it's nice to have, particularly for ad sets and, and advanced marketers who need to get into the analytics, but for the average business owner, for the average web designer, we don't need to know that much, like just the basics. And I've found, and I'm curious to see what you've seen with this in, in your experience, Paul, with clients. I found that clients often say they want all the stuff, but then two months later, they're like, oh, just give me the snapshot. Like they don't, you know, they may say they want all the analytics, but they never do. Two months later, they just want to know page views and that's it. Yep. Most people want trends and that's why um, we built Fathom the way that we built it because we aren't analytics nerds ourselves. We know how to build software. I know how to design and write for software. My business partner, Jack, knows how to develop software, but we're not, we don't spend our, all of our lives in analytics data. So we built software that kind of reflects that and kind of reflects the need of other folks like us who make websites for ourselves or for other people to just get that snapshot of this is what's important. I don't have all day. I want uh, I have a minute of time. I just want to look. Are trends going up? Trends going down? If they're going down, what can I fix? If they're going up, then how can I celebrate? Gotcha. That's yeah. no, the well said. <laughs> so I would love to hear from your perspective, how you feel about what's going on with Google and the privacy issues. And I will say, we don't need to dive into this too far. I think um, Hans and his wife, Donata with Termageddon did a really good job recently of kind of hashing this out in episode 169 of this podcast. So I do recommend for anyone who wants to really hear about what's going on for about an hour in depth, go back to that episode. But what's your take on this, Paul? Because I'm sure this has a lot to do with, you know, why you're so passionate about Fathom, but what's your take on what's going on with GDPR compliance and Google and all the things? Yeah. So I'm glad they covered it because that's not my forte. I'm not the legal part. We have a privacy officer, Re, and that's her job. And Jack understands the technical side of things. I'm just a guy who makes it look nice and writes about it. So from my perspective, I, I wouldn't want to it, I think it's a risk, right? So using Google Analytics is illegal in the EU and it's illegal for anybody that has visitors from the EU to their website. How that's enforced, it will see. It already has started to be enforced in Europe, uh, in France, Austria, and I think maybe one other place. But for myself, I wouldn't want to take that risk. I wouldn't want to risk if I'm a company in Canada or, or America I, the likelihood of somebody suing me over this seems like an unknown, but if there's another option, I would probably just want to go with that, right? Especially when that other option has unlimited data retention and UA, or Universal Analytics is being canned next year. Um, it's also complicated. It also, blo like... Google Analytics doesn't give you most of the data. One, it data samples a lot, so it doesn't give you accurate data. And two, it's blocked by anybody that uses an ad blocker, which is half of the internet, right? So that's why we have a solution to get around ad blockers. But I think the whole privacy thing is just, if there is an option to respect your visitor's privacy, I would, I would, I would take it. And I mean, yeah. given how fast our customer list is growing, like more and more people are starting to feel like, okay, well, it's just... If it's just easier to de-risk in this way by just switching to a product that does respect privacy, why don't we just do that? And, and I, I agree, like some people need much more complicated analytics and Fathom isn't right for them. Fathom isn't right for every, every person. I don't, there's no software on the, pro, on the planet that's right for every single person, but for the folks who just need that this is the high level of how my website is performing, how the content's going, how referrers are working, tracking UTM for marketing campaigns um, and conversions through uh, events. 
then that's then then it's a good fit, right? So now, do you guys have plans to make it more robust in the future for people who do want to use Fathom but do want another layer back of advanced reporting for ads or anything like that? Yeah, I mean for for now we do try like you can track ads through UTMs and you can track conversions through events and we are adding features like this year is after Q1 is like feature 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 being released but the plan is never to be and I was talking to um to our SEO person today and she was like I have to take a course to learn how GA4 works and it's going to take about a month to do and I told her if Fathom ever requires a course to learn how to use Fathom, we have absolutely failed. Gotcha. Right. So we are adding features. We are making the product better. As we get more customers, we learn from more people. Right. So we're always iterating, making it better and adding things that people want. But there is never going to be a point where Fathom rivals the functionality of Google Analytics. It's just, it's just never going to happen. Our software is always going to be focused on simplicity and what the majority of people need that aren't analytics experts that they just want to run their business or run their blog kind of thing. So there's always going to be more and better features, but never going to be all of the features kind of thing. Gotcha. Yeah. So I've been sitting on this question for about a month and a half. Cause when I interviewed Hans and Donata with, uh, with Termageddon, I asked him, what's the difference between Ter uh, Fathom and Google Analytics? Like, how, how are you guys looking at stats and traffic, but how are you staying compliant? Uh, he said, I don't know. You'll have to talk to Paul. So here we are. I finally get to ask the question to you, Paul. Uh, what is the difference between you guys with Fathom and Google Analytics? How do you stay compliant? Yeah, so it, it comes down to tracking information in aggregate. And all that means is we don't track individuals across a website. We track the totals. So I, we can't, you can't see in Fathom that Visitor X went to this page, then this page, then this page. They were using Firefox and they converted and signed up for the newsletter and, and bought this thing. But we can tell you this many people visited this page, this many people completed this conversion event, this many people use this browser, right? So we created something, gotcha. we created a way to anonymize data so it's not tied to an individual that has now been copied across the industry. Like any That's company that does, yeah, any company that does privacy focused analytics uses our method of hashing and then salting visitor data, then recycling those salts. So it's almost like, uh, it's, it's almost like group data versus individual data. That's how I yep. envision it. Yeah, exactly. That's all aggregate is. It's just, it's, it's grouping data. So it isn't tied to an individual, which gets into compliance and privacy issues. It's, we're just going to anonymize all of the visitors and just give you the data as, as totals, which we find, and our, I guess our customers agree with us because they stick around, is that that data is just as useful to make business decisions, right? So knowing what pages are the most popular, what events convert at the highest rate, what UTM tags are used to drive the most traffic to your site from each campaign that you run. Those totals can be just as useful to making business decisions as I see person X did all of these things and then Google probably tracks them to the next site and the next site and the next site. And it's probably right. why they're illegal now. Um, yeah. Well, and of course my, uh, with clients. And then when I did that initial tutorial on Google analytics, the thing that always got the most feedback and the most wow factor was the location mapping to where for, as anyone who doesn't know, when you look at Google Analytics, you can go to geo, you can go to location, and you can literally see by country, by state, every little dot will pop up where a computer hit your website. And it was it was always a little creepy to me that it was that pinpointed. Um, yeah. So I imagine this is much less, much less intrusive and just more. I mean, do you guys have analytics for locations and stuff like that? But again, country it's just only. more country yeah, only. Country, okay. country, that's it. Yeah, there's there's other products that do city and that, but then if you think about it, you're like, okay, well, you can if you can see somebody's city, the city's not that big. You can see their browser, you can see the pages, you can see. It seems like it's creating a user profile of that person, which is antithesis to how Fathom wants to operate because we want to comply with how things like the GDPR and other privacy laws that are similar are set up to protect that data from people. 
And, and it and also makes, means you don't have to have a cookie consent banner, which I think are, as a designer, I feel like those are ugly. I so our biggest thing them. was, yeah. Yeah. So our biggest thing was, okay, how can we comply with GDPR and similar laws so that that isn't needed? So if you use Fathom, you don't have to use a cookie banner because I think they're ugly. <laughs> And I yeah. don't want ugly and things on my website. Yes. Between, yeah, especially as a UX guy like yourself, um, that's huge. And uh, our friends at Termageddon are also creating a solution for a cookie list, or they're, they're having a, some sort of cookie solution as well, I know, which I'm sure is, is going to be awesome if you're doing different sorts of tracking. Because I don't know how that would work with like Facebook pixels or anything else. I imagine you'd you still, still have to use. Yeah, I'm, I so, can only talk about if you're using Fathom, you don't have to use a cookie consent banner with Fathom. But yeah, if you have a Facebook pixel, I would assume you have to, if you have a Google um, tag manager or a Google, yeah. whatever the thing is for ads, you, you still have to have it, but you don't need one for Fathom side of things. Yeah, that's awesome. And the idea of this like location tracking, I've, I've never ran across a situation for any of my clients or myself where I needed to know the exact city of somebody. Now, I guess, depending on the industry, maybe that's really beneficial for marketing, but for yeah, it me, depends. for me, I never, you know, like I never needed that. It's nice to know how much of my traffic is U S versus UK or Europe or Australia or whatever, but that's definitely all I need to know. So you're like, you're selling me more and more on every point. Cause as of, as of us talking right now, I'm still using Google analytics, but I have a feeling maybe even before we stop recording, I might officially transfer it over to fathom because yeah. awesome. it's making a lot of sense. It's definitely, it, it makes a lot yeah. of sense, particularly for me. Uh, and, and for most web designers for, for most clients. So, um, yeah, that's great. That, that makes a whole lot of sense. Now, when it comes to where you're at right now, I'm actually kind of curious from you, Paul, like what is, what is a challenge that you're seeing with this? Um, and I guess you could take this any way you want, but with fathom, like, um, you're obviously growing at, at a rapid place, but let's address my mindset. I'm hesitant to leave Google Analytics because of all the things we've talked about so far. I do occasionally do some Facebook ads and uh, my ad guy, Kevin, we look at Google Analytics to see who came through the site, where they came from, what they did. Um, obviously, it's not pers I don't mean to personally be intrusive. I just want to know, like, mm -hmm. is the money I'm investing working? So um, how do you... I guess it's kind of a tough question, but is that a challenge for you to help people kind of break out of Google Analytics into this new platform? Yeah, I mean, we do write, con we're pretty passive about it. Like we're not really, we're not really hardcore um, at, at sales on it, but we do, I think the, the way that we sell is a way that, I, that I've always sold, whether it was web design to web design clients or courses or books, it's just education. Right. So educating customers on the fact that Google Analytics is illegal and you are at risk of fines and complaints Two, you don't get to see all of your data. So if you're running campaigns, you only get to see a little bit of sample data or the data from people who don't have ad blockers. So with Fathom, if you're running a campaign, you just create a UTM, the UTM is tracked in Fathom. And if you use a custom domain on Fathom, which gets around ad blockers, then you see 100 percent of your data. Uh, we also remove data from bots and crawlers. I've seen screenshots of people's Google Analytics where they have like 20,000 people on their website and there's not really 20,000 people on their website. Yeah, I had one. I had one last year. I had this huge spike in traffic and I was like, whoa, did I get like picked up by a, you know, a really popular blog or a website or something? No, it was some bot thing. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, and then I guess the, the third point is just the, the simplicity is being able to see the things that you want to see quickly without drilling into reports. I think that actually the fourth thing, because we're recording this today when Google announced that they're killing off universal analytics, one, you can't migrate to my knowledge universal to a GA4 property. Like there's some things you can migrate, but that historical data has to live in um, UA and that data will be deleted. Fathom has forever data retention. Every plan doesn't matter. Gotcha. Right. So, and that I, I think Hans talked about this back in 169 when he talked about moving to Fathom, but do you guys, are you able to migrate anything from Google analytics or does it start off with a fresh, you know, a clean slate when you sign up with Fathom? We're working on an importer which should okay. be out probably by the time this airs, we'll have a Google analytics importer. So, 
we're basically we basically want to help folks save their historical data. So if UA is going away, if they're nuking all of that data, if you import it before that happens in a fathom, then that data can stay. Okay. Their API is about as easy to use as their product. So <laughs> I can imagine building, building a but remember though, we have to be simple. So if right. we're building an importer, I've looked at other tools and it's about 15 to 20 steps to like log into Google Cloud, create an API key and all of this. And we're like, we just want to like connect through OAuth and click assign this site's data to this site on Fathom's data, the end, right? Gotcha. So we're working on making it very, very simple. So we could have launched this if we if it was a complex thing, but like all of our like all of our features, right? Everything has to be as simple as possible. Like that is, it goes as far as priorities, privacy. If privacy isn't achieved, we won't do it. Then simplicity, right? So our customers can just do the things that they want to do without having to struggle or learn how to do it or spend hours figuring it out. Would it be possible for me and everyone listening? Let's say, all right, I'm ready. It's fathom time. I'm going in. Um, obviously we can't import the old data from Google analytics yet, but we don't need to like close out our Google analytics. We can just start the new tracking in with fathom. And then would we be able to import our previous data? Like if I oh, lose yeah. a month or two, no big deal. That's not going to be the end of the world. Yeah. It's a historical date. The importer is for historical data. So any data you have in Google analytics, can be imported. Like if it's from two years ago, 10 years ago, it doesn't matter. Like the importer is going to take historical data, but remember, it's not going to take all of the data. It's only going to take data that can be privacy that matches focused, with, compliant, yeah, matches that with matches them. up with the data set that we collect data for. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. That's great to know, especially for web designers, because again, that, I mean, for clients, this is huge. Uh, most everyone listening right now has clients and they're running Google analytics. A lot of them are, uh, what's the other, I know there's one based out of the UK. Is it monster monster insights or something like that? Yeah. There's a WordPress, um, analytics plugin, but that runs on your site. So it can slow your site down. Whereas mm, we have gotcha. a global, we have a global CDN and we're one of the, well, I was going to say we were the only company then a couple companies fixed. We launched a, a solution last year that process, part of GDPR is a, the SHREMS2 ruling, which means that EU visitor data has to be processed in the EU by EU owned companies. Mm. Otherwise it can be illegal because the privacy and Hans and Donato might've talked about this, but the privacy shield was invalidated, I think in 2020. Yes. So you can't process EU visitor data in the US or in the EU on US owned servers. So what we've done is one, we're a Canadian company. So we have a uh, data adequacy ruling. And two, we process EU visitor data in the EU on servers owned by a German company. Mm. And then everybody else is processed um, through our global CDN, um, through AWS, through Amazon so servers. You, you know, if it works in Germany, because this is that's where everything really started, right? Wasn't it like a guy out of Austria who there was Max you know, he, Schrems? Yes, he is yes. like infamous now for being the one who who spearheaded this movement for privacy. Um, so if it works there, obviously we should be good everywhere else. I imagine is the thinking. Yeah. And we are, and I guess it's better than just an EU only analytics company because we can process data fast for everybody outside of the EU and process data in a compliant way for everybody in the EU. So it's like the best of both worlds where we have a global CDN, we process data faster than anybody else that we've seen. Um, but we're still as compliant as, as possible on GDPR and specifically the, the Schrems 2 aspect of GDPR. Gotcha. So, it's pretty, pretty nerdy, but really it's just, you don't have to worry about that if you're a customer of Fathom, because we do that automatically for all our Thank customers. Thank goodness. That's as far as I wanted to go on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I like your, I like your marketing approach. Uh, obviously I'm a fan of you as a, as an author and, and as a person and your journey so far. So it makes a lot of sense that the way you sell quote unquote now is with content. And I, and it sounds like you take the same approach. Uh, I'm a big fan of the, the guys from base camp. And I remember, I think it was the book rework where they said their goal was to out educate their competition. Um, they didn't really do much marketing. They just out educated and made a really kick-ass product. And that sounds like you guys have the same playbook as far as writing content and producing stuff that is helpful and is going to bring people towards you instead of, you know, 
doing Facebook ads where you're like, Google analytics is illegal. Go to jail or use fathom. Um, yeah. not, you yeah, know, not a lot of it. it. Yeah. A lot of it's content. A lot of it is word of mouth as our customer base grows. They are excited to use fathom and they tell other people we focus more on support and sales, I would say. Mm, so we good. take care of, uh, we support our customers and go above and beyond for customer support because we know that's actually a really good sales channel. So, and I knew that when I, when I was doing web design for, for clients, I knew that if I did everything that I said I was going to do, if I was communicative through the entire process, if they saw the results that they, that they wanted to see as far, not things like if you redesign my site, I'll make a million dollars kind of thing, but just results of like, the project is going to take three or four months. You're going to get this at the end of it. And this is what you're going to be able to do with your website. And then just simply delivering on the things we, I, we, we do that with Fathom where That's awesome. customers know exactly what they're going to get. If they have a question, they email us, Jack or I respond like customer service is literally just me answering emails and Jack answering the, the really technical emails. Um, we'll eventually hire for that because we kind of need to, <laughs> um, but we'll still be like, we both feel that support isn't just something that needs to be done by whomever, whenever they get to it, it's, that is very, very important because like, honestly, that's one of our biggest sales channels right now is making our customers happy. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's like, it, it's a no brainer to just keep, keep doing that. That's a great lesson too. Just outside of this topic is if you do a really good job for a few, you know, a handful of customers, that is the most important thing. Cause I found just complete aside, I'll just derail us happily here. Um, as a web design coach, I see a lot of people who just focus on new clients and like, I gotta get a new client. Gotta get a new client. As you know, Paul, in web design, you don't need that many clients to get to six figures if that's what you need to have a nice life. So if you focus on a handful of clients or maybe a couple dozen clients at most and do a really good job for them, you're going to get referrals and they're going to pay you more importantly over and over and over again. As I think you answered this question, but I was going to ask like, has your experience or how has your experience in web design, how has that translated to fathom and how, and how you're running this and how you're marketing it? Yeah. Retention is cheaper than acquisition. And I, I learned that more than 20 years ago and it's stuck in my head. Not much does, but it's stuck in my head. And I just know <laughs> that if I can continue to keep people happy and that's how it works. It's funny too, because like when you think about web design, you don't think of that as being similar to a SaaS company where it's subscription based. But for me, I, the problem I had was it was harder and harder to take on new customers because I would never lose existing customers. They would keep coming back. They would keep wanting more work. And that's why I had a waiting list for the entire time that I was a web designer because I focused on making the current projects and the current people involved in the project as happy as possible. One, they would tell everybody. And two, they would just always come back to me for, for more and more work. If you're not getting repeat customers, you're doing something wrong in web design. I a hundred percent believe that to be true. That's very well said. And I, and I think maybe what might be a little bit different now in the landscape of web design compared to when you started for sure, but even on to, you know, when you got away from web design is the subscription model is becoming way more popular. And the cool thing yeah. is I, I personally like the hybrid approach. I like still doing a one-time redesign for a brand or a website, but then having the hosting maintenance and recurring services like ongoing SEO, copy, conversion-based stuff that can accompany that. I, I love that model. And what's, what's kind of cool about what I see now as a, as a web design coach is I see all the different models and they all work. It just depends on, you know, what, how you want to craft your perfect service. Um, I personally like the hybrid approach, but I've got a student right now, shout out to Steve, who is purely subscription and he does all subscription based web design, which is really cool. And I still have a lot of folks who just do one-time builds. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I, I see the landscape being really open-ended, which is actually really cool, uh, for web designers now. And obviously, you know, this is a big part to it of how we support our clients ongoing, because I found one of the biggest keys to selling maintenance plans for me and hosting plans was clients wanted to know I was looking after their site. And mm -hmm. even if they didn't care that much about the details of Google analytics, they at least wanted to know, or they at least wanted to see just some, a monthly snapshot of traffic and stuff. Um, so that actually kind of leads me to another question I had on, on reporting. 
what are your, what does your reporting options look like with Fathom? Do you have basic advanced? Are you going to integrate those with other tools eventually? Yeah. I mean, we have, as you could probably guess, very simple reporting. Um, and it's funny too, to, to mention the, um, the packages. I, I've noticed that even though I've been out of web design for, for many, many years now, we have a lot of client, a lot of our customers are agencies or freelancers who include Fathom in the package that they set, the maintenance package that they sell. Because every Fathom plan, you can have up to 50 discrete websites and you okay. can create email reports for each of those 50 websites. You can, it's something we haven't touched on, but I think is really useful for, especially the web design crowd, is we have free uptime monitoring. So every site you add on Fathom, you can just, you can turn on uptime monitoring. So you can get a text, a Slack, a Telegram, or an email if a site is offline, mm -hmm. which if you go to a client and say, hey, I noticed your site was offline, but I got it back up for you and nobody noticed, like, that's kind of a big deal. Like that's, yes. if they're thinking about like, should I pay for this retainer contract? And they get that, they're like, no, I'm going to keep paying for this. Yes. Right? Are, are, so, you, are you familiar with Managed WP? Yeah. So uh, actually funny, Paul, I asked you a text question when you did a webinar with Hans and Donata. I was actually on that. Uh, I, I caught about half that webinar. I actually came up with what I hope you guys do, which is uh, Fathom Geddon. I think that's what I call it, where hopefully you guys partner up one day and just have this awesome compliant privacy analytics machine. Uh, <laughs> but I had asked you in there, if you have any, uh, uh, hooks in with managed WP. And I know it's not something you guys have right now, but I, I the reason I say that is I use managed WP, my agency does, and I recommend it in my maintenance plan course, all my students. But the cool thing is it sounds like you could use managed WP for uptime monitoring updates, all that stuff, yeah. but then you could have a separate report for fathom or maybe include it in the same email or something like that. Yeah, um, exactly. We always have like integrations are important and we, that's why we have a WordPress plug and that's why you can see your analytics data. You can see a fathom dashboard when you're logged into WordPress as admin, mm -hmm. but right now we're focused on our core product. Like there will be integrations, more integrations in the future. And if more of our customers want that managed WP integration, that's something that we will definitely look at. But right now, integrations are on the back burner, but also people keep building integrations for us. So people keep building, like there's a, I was looking at uh, Kirby today. It's a, it's a flat file CMS like WordPress, but a uh, flat file instead of um, WordPress. And there's two plugins already on Kirby for Fathom. I'm like, oh, okay. Where did these even come from? So th people are making people are making integrations with Fathom. Our API is going to be public this year. It's in early access right now, which is going to open the floodgates for integrations. So there's a lot on the horizon as far as that. But for right now, because our team is so small, it's um, yeah, a Fathom's a handful of people. It, it's probably, I mean, you've read company of one, you know how I feel about this. Yes. Man. Yeah. So I love that. I love it. It's always going to be a, a small, um, a small team. That right? actually draws me. And I think a lot of folks listening and watching, I, I think we're drawn to more small teams, just like clients are that I worked with so many clients who were, who, who were burned from agencies and they did not want a big agency. They wanted Josh and a, a couple team members. That was it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's maybe what separates you guys from quote unquote, the competition right now too, is I like that. Like, I like knowing it's you and, and a few others right now. I realize it's going to grow and you're going to scale, but, um, there's also ways to go about that, that you can avoid being a massive company that is a faceless, you know, person, personality less company is personality yeah, exactly. is personality less a word. It is here by God. So. It is now. I, I always done. make up a word on this show. So there we go. And I feel terrible for the folks who don't speak English as their first language. And they're they're. I just had some, I'm so funny, complete tangent. Last week, a guy from India uh, reached out, sent me a video, said he loves the podcast and he reads the, transcrip the transcriptions because he's learning English. Uh, and I was like, I'm so sorry, man. I hope, <laughs> I hope, hope it goes all right. Um, but anyway, I love, I love that. I think that really draws Thanks. me to, to the company as well. Um, so it makes a lot of sense to be able to, to handle that like that. And again, I, I view you a lot like I view, and I say you as in Fathom, kind of like Divi, which is the theme that I still use and I uh, am a big part of their community. Um, it was very similar even back when I started using Divi back in 2014. It was a smaller team with elegant themes who created Divi. And mm -hmm. they said the same thing. 
They were like, we're focusing on the product. We get tons of feature requests, tons of integration requests. Those will come. Some people will make their own plugins like you talked about, but the core product is the most important thing. So um, that definitely reassures me with, with, you know, what you have going forward. Did you set out like that? Like, did you, does your, does your mission statement say, you know, a certain thing about that or is it just natural? Is it based off of, you know, your personality and your approach to business? Yeah. I mean, there's, I think we just always know that there's always going to be things that we can do on our core product to make it better, more refined, easier to use, and um, as compliant as people as we can make it where people don't have to worry about it or do a bunch of stuff to make it compliant, right? So like there's yeah. there's so many things with the product. And it's so fun to to be honest, like it's so fun for the product to be yours where you can make these decisions. Right. Like sometimes I remember using other products where I was like, okay, this product is amazing. And then they start to grow and then they start to go in a different direction. I'm like, this product isn't for me anymore. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, well, this product can always be for, for people like, like Jack and I, and for the customers that we have, because we focus on our existing customers and their needs. So as long as you are a customer and we're listening to those sorts of things, then it's always going to be, it's not obviously going to be perfect where we're meeting the needs of every single customer ever. That would result yeah. in a very complicated product. But we right. try to listen Google to- Google Analytics. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We try yeah. to listen to like the overarching themes of like, okay, what are most people asking for? Or what is the problem? Like, it's just like, if a client says, I want the button to be here in blue, it's like, okay, well, what problem are you trying to solve? And if you get to what the problem is that they're trying to solve, it may not be the solution that they've come to because they're not web designers, right? Mm -hmm. So like, we always try to peel back the layer to like, okay, well, what are they, what's this person trying to solve? Like, what do they want to accomplish with this? Because what they're asking for, they, they don't build analytics software, right? That, that's our job. So it's our job to listen to what the problem is and then figure out if the solution is accurate, because sometimes it could be for sure, or if there's a better solution that they just haven't thought of because they're used to their business and we're used to the business that we run, right? So like, yeah. we're always trying to listen to, so we come up with solutions to things that nobody asked for, but they've asked for in a different way and they've had a different solution for it. But we're like, okay, well, we can solve this for everybody if we do it in this other way. Kind and, of I, and I think there's a big benefit with your background to being a web designer, being a, an agency owner, being a an entrepreneur and being in these different phases of, of the webpreneur where it's funny, we were talking about this idea of a webpreneur, which, you know, you were on the cusp of, uh, as an author and a course creator. I'm actually just personally curious. Um, you've sold a lot of different things in a lot of different ways between being a web designer, being an agency owner, being a course creator, being an author. What's, what's it like being, uh, in a SaaS company? Cause, cause it takes a whole different skill set. Um, well, I'm just curious, like how do you, yeah. Wh what's the difference with, with how you're, you know, running this between other di different ways you've sold and, and done work? Yeah. I mean, compared to web design, it's a volume thing. Like I was charging 10 to 30 grand a website when I was doing web design. So I need, I need, like you said, I needed like a dozen clients a year. And I was like, this is amazing money. Like, this is just a, this is just, and now it's like, well, our base plan starts at $14 with Fathom. Right. So like you need, it's just like selling, selling books. I think the book company of one costs anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks. And as an author with a traditional publisher, I probably get 50 cents to a dollar. Right. Right. So like understanding the, the volume. And I mean, that's why we tested things, man. Like that's why in the beginning Fathom was a screenshot and then Fathom was an open source project. And then Fathom started with like a single plan for, for something that people could pay for, because I knew that in order for it to work out, like I can't sell 12, subscriptions to fathom at $14 a month and <laughs> right live <laughs> like, I could, this yeah. microphone alone costs more than that right, right? right. so I, I, we needed to test we needed to test the fact that there was that there could be volume there and yeah. and luckily those tests worked out but a lot of things are so similar like it it is like all of the things that we were talking about like just being being communicative with people being able to um, do the things you say you're going to do, be able to listen, be able to listen to not the thing that they're asking you to do, but the problem you're trying to solve, they're trying to solve. 
And so I think in, in that regard, there, there's a, just a ton of similarities, but it's also fun to watch income compound, right? Because the, the beauty of SaaS and the mm, beauty yeah. of having things like, like that business model is that, okay, it's cool if like a couple dozen people pay for Fathom a day, but that's only a couple hundred bucks, right? But then like, if you look at that and you see like, okay, every day, dozens of people sign up for this. And then every day, hundreds and hundreds of dollars are added to the pool where it just keeps growing. And our churn rate, I think is like 2%, like our churn rate is ridiculously low. Awesome. Right. So like if our churn rate is almost a rounding error, but our growth keeps compounding slowly, but like still compounding, then it's, it's viable. And it doesn't take, it's funny because like when I first started with digital products, I was like, passive income. And like, I should have watched more of what Pat actually meant by passive income. Right. Where yeah. it is like, this is a full time, Fathom is a full time job for a number of people to get that passive income. But so it still works. Same thing with but, courses, as you know, like yes. I, I make the bulk of my income and revenue with courses. Uh, I do have a, a coaching community that is subscription based. It's recurring, which is, is cool. It's very different than the courses because my courses are one time. Um, similarly, like it's, it's not service work, but it's not quite, you know, SaaS style. Would you view like course and digital product sales as kind of a, a middle between a service base and a, and a SaaS style product? Yeah, because you can get volume. Like I did courses almost exclusively for many years and I would have some months where my income was like a hundred times what it was a month before. Cause I was just like, Oh, this is course launch month. Right. Yeah. So in that way, but you could still sell, like I didn't have to work with the way that my courses worked was you it's self-paced. So I didn't have to, so it was different from web design where I didn't have to work with that person. Every time somebody bought it, I could sell to 2000 people or hundred people. It didn't make any difference in my workload, but I right. still had to do work and strategize to be able to launch it in a way where people would want to buy it. Right. So it would be the thousands of people instead of hundreds or dozens <laughs> of people. Yeah. 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 I found that too. I, I've definitely, I've sold a lot of different things in a lot of different ways now at this point in my career. And um, courses are awesome, but extremely tricky. And there may be no more sense of a like highs and lows because you, I have experienced, you have really good months and really bad months, depending on what's going on, depending on the time of year, depending on launches, depending on sales, depending on webinars or other content you're putting around it. Uh, so it is pretty interesting. Yeah. I just, I was just kind of curious. I wanted to get your, your take on that. Yeah. Cause it's a, lot different. it's a lot different. Yeah. It's super different. I only had time to open up my courses twice a year and people were always like, well, why don't you leave them open the whole year? I'm like, I don't have time. Like mm, there's yeah. so much work that goes into these courses. I need to just focus on either launching them or focusing, focus on making them better for 10 months. And that's where I found yeah. I could generate the most revenue or supporting them. If you want to get ongoing So that's, that's why yeah. I sold my web design agency in 2020. I was like, I literally cannot support my courses. I have a suite of web design courses. I cannot support them and do client work. I just can't, I can't do them yeah. both at the same time. Otherwise they're both the going to be, thing. they're going to be, they're going to be half-assed and terrible. Each one of them. And I don't exactly. want to do that's that. That's why we have two cheeks. <laughs> that's good yeah it's true that's great i've never heard that oh that's awesome yeah it's true dad, it, it really i have so many dad true. jokes so. oh i love that i love well i i i have uh i have two and i think i can say this by the time this comes out we just found out we're gonna have third on the way here so uh oh, I, I thank you thank you yeah I, I love a good dad joke i have my roadcaster with the uh the dad joke drum but i'm not gonna hit that on a podcast believe it um <laughs> But yeah, no, it's really fascinating. And look, side note too, for, for folks who are doing the, again, the hybrid model with selling a one-time service and a subscription model, I tell all my students, it does take a different set of selling, um, and experience and skill or, or confidence, whatever you want to call it to sell because they're very different services. I've had some people, like, I had a client who paid $4,000 for a website like that, just no problem. 
I asked him to go on my hosting and maintenance plan and it was like, I killed his dog. It was, he was like, Oh, it was, I don't know about that. It was like 49 bucks a month. I'm like you dropped yeah. four grand on your website and you don't want to pay 50 bucks a month to host it and maintain it. Um, so it is interesting the way people buy, you know, certain services are pretty fascinating, but, uh, anyway, I've derailed us pretty good. Um, but I think I get a good feel for, you know, what you're up to with fathom. Um, I know we're getting close on time. Lunch is coming around for you uh, on the West coast. So, uh, this has been awesome, Paul. Thank you so much for your time and for sharing uh, a lot about what you're up to. Uh, I found this fascinating just based off of your experience and what you're up to. I have a final question for you. I will say uh, I'm a part of your of your affiliate program, so everyone can go to joshhall.co slash fathom uh, to, to check you out. For anyone listening, watching, um, if you'd be so kind to do that. I'm definitely... I'm saying it public, I'm switching over to Fathom. Um, so I'm really excited about where you're at now and, and seeing what you're going to do moving forward. Uh, final question for you, Paul. Uh, actually, before we get to that, where would you like people to go? Obviously, they can go to my link. That'll be linked. Uh, but is there like a certain resource or a video or something you'd like everyone watching to, to check out just to get f more familiar with you? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a video. It doesn't have as many views as your Google Analytics one, but there's a, a video on if you just... I think if you just type in Fathom Analytics demo in YouTube, there's a video that I did that has a walkthrough. So people are like, oh, I don't know about Fathom or I don't know how it works. There's, I think it's a, it's under 10 minutes and it taught, I talk you through how the entire software works. Okay. So. We can link that in the show notes. Uh, it looks like there's a couple, which one? Oh the, yeah. The, a bunch of, one I forgot that a bunch of people have been doing them that it's for the, it's under the channel fathom analytics. Okay. Too. So it's like the, uh, the official one. I'm the not really that good official. at YouTube. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fine, I think yeah. I'm, on, I think I'm on it now. I'll make sure we link that cool. correct one in the, in the show notes for you. Um, Last question, more broad. How do you feel about the landscape of web design and just you know, webpreneurship nowadays? Are, are you excited? Are you a little apprehensive about anything or what's your general feeling? Um, I think it's still, I think it's still a fun place to be. Like it's, it's a fun, I've always felt like creating something out of nothing is the coolest thing in the world. That's why I like making websites, why I made courses, books, like it's just the making stuff. Like I just like to make stuff. I'm not as good as making stuff with my hands as I am on the computer. So that's what I focus on. Um, so I still think that it's awesome. I still think that being able to help somebody with their business by giving them a new website or an updated website or a better website is just like helping people make money is, is cool to watch. And like, I've always been super, like there's a reason I still keep up with some of the clients that I worked with 15, 20 years ago. Cause like, I feel like I have a, I feel like I, I was part of that journey. Right. Like I feel like I seeing their success just makes me feel pretty awesome. Yeah. So I don't know, man, I'm still pretty excited about that. I still think it's, I still think it's amazing. I think the landscape has definitely changed from like my dream weaver days and, and uploading files to like an FTP server, but like, it's still, it's still awesome. There's still a bunch of complexity and there's still a bunch of things that are just fun to fun to watch people do. So and I meant to ask this earlier, Fathom, I mean, it, it obviously you can use any platform, Webflow, WordPress, whatever. Um, do you guys track things differently for different platforms or does the software just, you know, look it's pages? A single, it's one line of code that you add to your header and it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Gotcha. We have a WordPress plugin, so you don't even need to do that. You just add your yeah. site ID in the plugin, but... And then it works like that for Kirby and a bunch of other CMSs that I don't, I don't even know all of the plugins that exist for Fathom because it's kind of taken on a life of its own. Yeah. But yeah, we don't care what software you use, what CMS you use, what framework you use, next, next, all of that stuff, all the super nerdy stuff that I don't even know how that works. It just works. It's one line of code. You just add it and it, and it works. And Fathom starts collecting yeah. page views instantly and our dashboard uh, is real time as well, which Google Analytics I think takes twenty four to forty eight hours. I, I have I I don't even mean to throw shade at Google Analytics. It just kind of like comes out naturally because I spent so much time in the compare and contrast of okay, if this is how something works for the biggest player, how can we make it work better? So. I, I, I unintentionally throw shade all the time. I think it's fine. And look, <laughs> every, every shady point you put out here is like what 
can go on your website as like, here's the issue with Google Analytics. Here's the way we solved it. Or here's the difference. So yeah, there's a page for agencies on our website. I think after we did the Termageddon um, webinar with Hans and Donata, Hans was like, you should make a, you should make a page on your site for agencies because they'll have all similar questions. And then I looked through all of our support tickets and we're like, he was right. They all have similar questions. So then I made a page on Fathom for agencies and for agency owners and for folks who work with their own clients because they all have similar questions. And so I, I, I address them all. Yeah. I'll, I'll make sure we have that linked as well. I just found that website analytics for agencies. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put the demo video and the agencies link in the show Sweet. notes for you. Um, awesome. yeah. Awesome. And again, everyone can check it out. Josh slash fathom F A T H O M. Um, and then I, do you guys, we haven't talked about pricing or anything. I know, you know everything's subject to, to changing, but you guys have a seven day free trial as of right now, right? Mm-hmm. That's not changing. Same with our $14 a month plan uh, is the base plan that we have. That's not changing. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we don't know. We don't want to change. That's been another thing that's kind of bugged me about other software products. It's like, oh, I pay $9 a month. And then it's like, oh, it just went up to 24. Oh, it just, oh, I it know. just went up to Netflix, $49. Isn't Netflix up to like 15 yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah. I so remember we never, when we never it, wanted to do that. <laughs> yeah. I remember when it was six ninety nine. Uh, yeah, it was never that it's, price in Canada. Not with our dollar. <laughs> oh, really? That's true. That's true. Yeah. It's probably, gosh, it's probably brutal up there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, man. Awesome. Paul, dude, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for sharing where we're at with everything. I really enjoyed this, this chat and, uh, getting a feel for you and what you're up to with fathom and I'm sold, man. Here it is. This was a live Sweet. case study of me moving from Google analytics to fathom. Who knows? Maybe I'll start doing some tutorials and, uh, and, uh, I'll jump you on the, uh, on the, awesome. on the YouTube. I'm sure you'd appreciate that friendly competition. I look forward right? to that actually. So. <laughs> that way you can yeah, do, well, you thanks so much for having much. me on. I appreciate it. And I, this is a great conversation. So thanks so much. Awesome, man. Let's do it again in the future. This is great, man. Cool. Thanks, Paul. Cool. Hey guys and gals, just wanted to pop in with a couple things before you head out. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast. I would love to hear your feedback and it will also help other web designers find the show. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. Just go to joshhall.co, click on podcasts and search this episode number and you'll find all the links, descriptions and resources we talked about. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and you'll be notified when the next episode is live. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.